Hello, and welcome to Retro Tech Repair. Today we're going to be repairing a Grandstand Munchman, a classic tabletop video game from the 1980s. You may also know it as a Tommy Pac-Man or a Tommy Puckman. I bought it on eBay, used and broken, and I'm going to repair it today with only limited skills and limited knowledge. Welcome to Retro Tech Repair. So let's take a quick look at the eBay listing. I'm not going to go through it in detail. You can pause the video and take a look if you really want to. The important things are that the seller clearly indicated that the game wasn't working and I paid £13.50 plus £4.95 shipping. So now let's go ahead and get started with the repair. So let's take a look. Generally it seems to be in quite nice condition. There's no box, it's obviously played. There is some scratching on the, um, on the face. Just general wear, yeah, but generally it seems to be in pretty good condition. The label's in nice shape. It's a little bit of wear on the on and off buttons. On the back, the instructions are very, very clear and clean. And inside, the battery tabs are there and there's no corrosion on the, on the battery. So, um, so let's just stick some batteries in, and first of all, and see if, as the seller described, it doesn't work. So these are um, a C-cell battery. We take four, these are brand new batteries, so no concern over those. We'll pop them in. They seem to be in. Switch it on. Nothing. Completely dead. Nothing at all. Okay, good. Well, at least we know where we are. Take the batteries out and let's take a look at what's inside. Sock comes off in one piece. Yeah, seems seems in pretty good shape. Just pop to that to the side. And inside, let's take a look at what we have. So let's go ahead and take this out so we can get in a little bit more. We have the controller board. A little reluctant to come out. Careful, I don't want to damage. Maybe there's a ribbon cable. It wouldn't be wouldn't be the first time that I'd broken a ribbon cable. As I say, I'm not in any way an expert. And as we move a little closer there, we can see the printed circuit assembly. And in fact, there is there is a ribbon cable from the from the controller onto the PCA. Yeah, one big chip. Let's take a look what that is. That is an NEC Japan. Tomi Japan is labeled on the board. And the numbers on the chip are 8224EK D553C160. I don't know what that means. PCA is quite nicely labeled. All of the parts are labeled. There's a few electrolytic capacitors on there, which obviously are suspect just because of the age and uh, one very small transformer, a few transistors. I'm guessing these might be resistor arrays. So, interesting. I think the first thing to do though is to see if we have power just at the main sources where you'd expect to see power. Okay, so we're back again. I've been doing a little bit of research on this device, the microprocessor. I have got this hooked up to my bench power supply just here out of shot. Negative on here on the daughter board and the positive on the battery terminal. I can see that if I apply the meter between the, the what would be the battery supply coming from the power supply and the supply going in, I have my six volts. Then if I do that between the power supply and the ground pin, pin 21 on the microprocessor and again I have six volts so then if I put my negative probe on the ground pin of the microprocessor and go along all the other pins at no point do I get any measurable voltage on any of those other pins. And that makes perfect sense to me because I think if this microprocessor was starting up, then we would hear 
you'd hear the sound going or something like that. Just a little bit of an access problem there. That component there is just getting in the way. So nothing. So no power is getting to this chip here because no power is getting to that chip here. Obviously the device, or the, the game isn't working. I think what I'm gonna do, I've already removed the uh, plastic piece holding the pizza in place. I think because this is turning out to be more complicated than I had originally planned because I'm kind of working around the uh, plastics here. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the electronics from the plastics so that I can troubleshoot this a bit further. I have the multimeter connected into the ground here. I have a, a supply which would normally just go to the battery off to the bench power supply there. And uh, we're just gonna take a look now. So if I go where the power's coming in, I can see I have the six volts that I would expect just a little bit over. And I can see if I follow that track down now, you know, I get to here, here, nothing. Here I see um, that's pretty much not quite directly connected, but it's in the area of the power transistor. I see that I see the six volts there. I don't see anything there. And I see a few things around here and the where this transformer is. But then when I get to the board, I don't see anything. Nothing at all on any, and especially here where I think the power should be going into the microprocessor, uh, or microcontroller, I, I don't see anything. So I'm thinking that this area here where the transistor is, the, what I've learned now is a power transistor. I Google the number, it's a, um, let's have a look at D882, uh, which I'd learned is a power transistor. This is suspect to me now. So I'm gonna take it out of the board and I'm gonna try and do some testing on it to see if, if that's faulty. There's also a switching transistor on the other side, which connects to one of the, one of the legs on this. I, um, I don't know much about that one. I suppose it could be not switching it to, so maybe we'll take a look at that one too if this one tests out bad. But for now, I'm just gonna take it out of the board and, um, and we'll see. When I recorded this originally in real time, I anticipated doing a real time explanation of how to test an NPN transistor. The problem was I didn't really know how to test a transistor, so I had Googled it just a few minutes before. As a consequence, when I came to do this recording in real time, my explanation was just dreadful. So speaking of dreadful, what I'm now trying to do is explain to you over the top of an existing video the steps that I had taken to do the test. And as you'll see, I'll probably make a terrible mess of it. But an NPN transistor, as I understand it, is like two diodes back to back. The N is the negative, the P stands for positive, and the N stands for negative. So what you should get is current flow from the positive to the negative, but not from the negative to the positive. So that's what we're going to try and test. I have my meter on diode test and I'm about to put, I hope, the positive probe from the meter onto the base, which is the P in the NPN. So here goes. Bit wobbly, but we're getting there. And what we'd expect to see is about 0.6 of a volt voltage drop across that NP junction. Fantastic. There it is, 0.64. So now we're going to leave the positive probe on the base and we're going to go onto the emitter. And what we should see on the emitter is a similar voltage drop to the one which we saw to the collector. Oh dear, that's much less than the 0.6 volts that we had expected, which, oh, oopsie, suggests that in fact this transistor has a short between the base and the emitter and we'll confirm that now by switching the probes the other way around so we have the negative on the positive and the positive on the negative and then from the glare of the light you can't see but again we got less than 0.1 of a volt so we have a short between the base and the emitter in this faulty transistor okay so i got a replacement transistor i uh, bought it on ebay I think I bought a pack of three for three pounds, so they're not terribly expensive. I could probably have got them for about 10 pence each had I just bought them from, um, or if I'd bought them in bulk, but I only needed a few of them, so I just bought the three. I'm gonna go ahead and solder it back into the board and we will see if it brings our Tommy Munchman or Grandstand Munchman back into life. 
Okay, so we're back again with our Munchman. We've taken the bad transistor out. We've proven that it was bad. We've tested it. It was bad. We've taken it out. Sorry, it's a little bit out of focus there. We put a new transistor in. I've made sure I got it in the correct orientation. I've not trimmed the leads yet, but um, I can do that, do that later. Uh, so uh, now we're going to turn it on and hopefully it'll come into life. Oh, well, I have to say that's a bit disappointing. Um, adhesive um, masking tape. It's a very delicate surface tape. Yeah, I'm sure if I were to put normal tape on there, I would risk losing the transfer. I'm still I'm risking losing the transfer, but I'm hoping that uh, that that's going to give me some protection there. I'm going to put some of this on. It is abrasive. I, I'm slightly nervous about the damage I might do to the display itself. And of course I could do it by hand, it would take me ages, but I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use this multi-tool, multi-tool to do it. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but we're going to do it anyway. Okay, so that hasn't gone at all well. Um, what we'll find now is I have I've actually scorched in a couple of places this, this Perspex, and, and now also it is considerably more hazy than it was before. Okay, we're back with our Munchman. I uh, did polish it quite a lot now with the uh, with the T-cut metallic, and that seems to be, I think I would say that was my favorite. Uh, there are still some marks on the screen, uh, pretty minor though, and much less significant than the scratches that were there before. So I think on balance, I wish I hadn't used that multi-tool to try and clean that off. That was definitely a mistake. I would not suggest that you do that at all. Uh, but ultimately, um, I did get all the surface scratches out. Uh, the ones that didn't come out with the blemishes I put in. I could, had I just done this by hand, have got a much nicer job because I wouldn't have put those additional blemishes in. So what I decided to do rather than just replace this transistor was to use my newfound transistor testing skills to see if I can test it and prove it to be faulty before I go to the trouble of soldering a new one in. Okay, so I did look it up. I found the data sheet for it. It is a C945. It's an NPN transistor, same uh, type of transistor as the last one. So uh, we're gonna test it in the same way. So now we're going to go from the base to the emitter and again, we should expect to see about 0.6. And there we get nothing. So we have a short between the base and the emitter. I did have a kit of bipolar transistors that I bought from Amazon. And I'm lucky enough that in that is a C945. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that back into the board. Gonna clip on to the negative here, and we'll go on to the positive here. And again, we're gonna power it up. You know, I become increasingly less optimistic about this, but we never know.
Well, how about that? We got some noise, but no display. So let's try that again. Finally, look at that. It has come up. We have a, um, we have a working display now, having replaced those two transistors. So that is marvelous. I, I, uh, the flickering that you see on the camera is not here on the, um, on the actual display. It's very, very bright. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to clean this up. We're going to solder it back. To, uh, we're going to connect it back together and we're going to see if we can play this game. Okay, so here we have all of our parts. Uh, for the life of me, I can't remember how they go back together, but um, I do have a video of it. So if I get stuck, I can always go back to that. You see me take it apart, so I'm not gonna show you all of me putting it back together. Well, I think that's about it for our grandstand or maybe our Tommy Munchman, depending how you want to call it. I guess it's grandstand since grandstand is the label. Uh, we've learned a lot on this journey or I've learned a lot on this journey. Uh, ultimately, I am disappointed with the cosmetic makeover. I have uh, damaged the label here, which is a shame because the label was in lovely condition when I got it. I have damaged some of the screen um, around here, which you know, is, is a shame, but at the same time, it was very, very scratched before. So, I mean, on balance, it's no worse, but I think it could have been better and I could have avoided that damage and had something very nice. It makes me a little bit sad that I took something that was in great shape and it's not in such great shape anymore. But the good news is it wasn't working and now it works perfectly and somebody can play and enjoy it in the way that um, you know, I wasn't able to do when I was a kid because uh, I didn't have one. <laughs>